When you release your own adult stem cells, you support the body's natural renewal system. But what if your released stem cells can't get to where they need to go? Enter patent pending Stem Flow, which supports your circulatory system. Let's join StemTech's Vice President of Training and Product Development, Dr. Donna Antar, a respected medical doctor with a strong understanding of natural alternatives. She holds a master's degree in exercise physiology. It has been said that Dr. Donna makes wellness fun. Let's listen as this published author and highly sought after national and international speaker shares her knowledge of stem flow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much and thank you for taking the time to be here today and I know that this is going to be well worth your time and we're going to be talking about a very exciting product, a circulation enhancer called Stem Flow. So let's talk about how it fits in with all of, all of our stem cell physiology and why it's needed. Well, first of all, in your stem cell physiology, you do multiple things. Stem cells need to be released from the bone marrow. Stem cell trafficking, what is trafficking? Just means to move around. They need to get places. And the way they get places is through the blood. It's our mechanism for getting cells from one part of the body to the other. And then they need to be recruited. Once they get to the tissues, they need to be taken up by the tissues and get into the tissues. Then, of course, once they get there, we know that there's not enough stem cells in the bone marrow to create all of the different um, stem cells and, and the rejuvenation that we see going on in the tissues so we know that they have to make more of themselves. That's what proliferate means. And then they have to differentiate. What does differentiate mean? It means to turn themselves into the cells of that specific tissue. And that's the whole picture. That's how the whole thing works. So let's talk about what is the important parts of the physiology that we know is able to be optimized. Because stem cell proliferation and stem cell differentiation kind of just happens. It happens very well. It doesn't seem to be a limiting factor. But what some of the limiting factors are is the release from the bone marrow, the trafficking, meaning the getting there, and then the recruitment by the tissues and migration. And STEM Enhance really focuses and, and answers and gives the body what it needs to support release from the bone marrow and also recruitment by the tissues and migration. Where we now have and need is with the trafficking, meaning getting there, having the circulation be optimized. Now, this is not something that was just thought of yesterday. This is something that Kristen Drapeau and his research team has spent four or five years in the making, putting this product together and making it such an important part of our overall support of our stem cell physiology. So stem flow is all about circulation. And why is that so important? Because your blood delivers the stem cells to the tissues. That's what your blood does. It also delivers oxygen and nutrients to the tissues. And when that flow is impaired, you create issues. You know, the body is all about balance. It's all about creating an optimum balance. Not too much of this, not too much of that, but a true balance of everything that needs to happen in our physiology. And that's what stem flow is about, is optimizing our circulatory system. So let's talk a little bit about what normal circulation is. What is that? Here's a diagram that you'd find in like a physiology book. It goes from the lungs and the lung oxygenates the blood and then that goes into the left side of the heart and then that goes out into the arteries and then the arteries get smaller and that's the arterioles and then it goes into the capillaries and the capillaries is where all the action happens. That is the most important part of your circulatory system because that's where the exchange of nutrients happens. That's where your body also gets rid of toxins and metabolic waste. And that post-capillary venule is the most vital part of this whole system because that's the only place where stem cells can get into the tissues from being in the circulation. Let's look at that capillary section just a little bit bigger. We're going to blow it up for you here. You go from your bigger arteries and then you go into the capillaries and then you go into those post-capillary venules. And that's where all of the metabolic exchange happens. Let me show you what that means in, in a very simple diagram. So if the top part is your blood and that blue circle is your stem cells, if your tissue is stressed, see that line there? That's, your, that's the cells of the vessel, your capillary wall there. That tissue releases little cytokines, little messengers. Those messengers make the stem cell attach 
roll on the vessel wall, and then go in through in between the cells. Now it gets into the tissue. And now it can migrate, meaning get to where the tissue needs assistance with renewal and rejuvenation. So the most important part only happens in the postcapillary venule. An, an example is if you have a train and you're going along on the track, if your blood is like the train and the train is carrying oxygen, it's carrying nutrients, it's carrying cells, red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and stem cells, the only way that you can actually release, get off the train, get out of the blood flow and into the tissues is in the postcapillary venule. We're talking about keeping a balance in the body so that everything works the best it can possibly work. That's how we feel great. The body's not working the best. It may not be an illness or a disease, but you may not feel so great. Your quality of life will suffer. Well, one of the things that you have to put in balance is your clotting mechanism. And your clotting mechanism is a delicate balance. Everybody knows that when they cut themselves, you're going to make a little clot. It's the body's normal mechanism. Well, part of that mechanism is a little protein called fibrin that you see at the top there, and you see it kind of has these little arms. When thrombin, this molecule of thrombin comes, it cleaves those arms, and what happens then, all those little fibrin molecules can now stick to each other. They basically kind of pack down and stick to each other. When that happens, you get like a mesh. And in the case of, of a cut, and what you'll see there is right there in that little patch, you've got the clot. That, along with some other mechanisms, is what stops the flow, is what makes the little patch. That's what's supposed to happen. But what's not supposed to happen is when it happens in other places. It's not supposed to just happen anywhere. It's only supposed to happen when your body needs it. And again, that's this concept of balance. If your blood circulation isn't optimal, why would that be? Well, if you have too many free radicals in your, in your whole physiology, and, and what makes free radicals? Most of you here have heard of the term free radicals. What makes free radicals is pollution, toxins, chemicals. Now, the body just doesn't know what to do with these chemicals, so it just sort of tries to store them or get rid of them. And what happens is those chemicals create oxidative stress, and oxidative stress creates more free radicals. Those free radicals do something that they're not supposed to do. What they do is they cleave those little arms. Remember those little arms that only thrombin was supposed to cleave off so that you can make the mesh and make the patch? Well, what happens is those free radicals also cleave the arms off. Not supposed to be doing that. If you only have a little bit of free radicals, which you are supposed to have, remember it's a balance, it's not no free radicals, you're only supposed to have a little bit, then this doesn't happen. But when you have too many, you have so much oxidative stress in the body and in the blood, these are the kind of things that happen. And so what happens is the free radicals create the cleaving and you get the mesh. Now the mesh doesn't have a purpose. It's not supposed to be doing that. So you have that same mesh and now the flow is kind of gunked up, so to speak, because it's got almost like these little tumbleweeds of this mesh along with cells and other things. So let's take a look under the microscope. I want you to get an idea of how blood flows when it's really healthy. Not too many free radicals, everything going smooth, you know, no extra fibrin being created. So what happens? The blood is really flowing and you can see how quickly that it goes through those capillaries. And remember, those capillaries are really, really small. But that you can only actually go one cell at a time through capillaries. They're something like three ten thousandths of an inch big. That's how small they are. Only one cell at a time can actually go through. And so if you see an impaired blood circulation, what you'll notice is, God, do you see how much slower that is? See how they just sort of put along? They don't flow like they're supposed to. Now, do you think you can feel that? No, probably not. But do you think that when it's happening in all sorts of different areas of your body, that little by little, your body can kind of tell because now you're getting out of balance. And even though you can't necessarily feel that, it does make a difference in your quality of life. It'll make a difference in little things that don't come up as something bad in, in a medical exam or anything I could pick up in tests, but it is something that affects the ability for your body to function optimally, and that's what we're all after. Remember, your tissues are no more than probably two or three cells away from the capillary. That's how the nutrients happen. That's how those tissues stay healthy. So here it is, all, the, all your stem cells are flowing to where they need to flow, and at that post-capillary venule area, they're going to start flowing out. They're going to go out into the tissue.